welcome back to my channel. Let's jump right in and see what I'm talking about this week. Old school, new school. Doesn't matter what they say, it won't make a difference anyway. Old school. Generations out in play. I was chilling on my bed, they dreaming about the day. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Now, in this video, I have been hearing, you know, it's the holidays. We just had Thanksgiving, Christmas is on the way, there's other little holidays sprinkled in between, and I've been hearing people talk about how oh they ate so much on thanksgiving all of the turkey cranberry sauce dressing macaroni and cheese and then the desserts they had the pumpkin pie sweet potato pie pecan pie apple pie peach pie just all the different pies you can think of and one of the questions was how can we still have all of these pies and desserts and cakes and cookies and stuff, but mostly like the pie and not feel so guilty about eating the stuff? Well, one of the things that I would suggest is to eliminate the crust. If you could go crustless, that would be, you know, a big help because the crust by itself is, you know, quite a bit of calories. So let's go check it out. Now this is showing here, I did a Google search and one pie crust, single serve, nine inch is 949 calories. So they're showing a pie crust over here. The nutrition facts, 949 calories for one nine inch pie crust. And you get your total fat, cholesterol, sodium, potassium, your vitamins, based on a 2,000 calorie diet. So 949 calories. Now I was doing some calculations and for some pies, you can get eight slices or you can get six slices. So I did 949 divided by eight and came up with 118.6 rounded up 118 i mean 119 rounded up for a nice clean number i like clean numbers so 120 calories for one like a wedge of a piece of pie that's just for the crust that's not even the filling and then if you do it 949 divided by six it comes to 158.1 i'm going it would stay the same but i'm gonna round it up 160 calories and that's for a little bit bigger wedge so it just depends on how many slices you get out of that pie so just think if you took the crust away the calories you would be saving I'm on this website called TideLandsHealth.org and they're having Thanksgiving Pie Wars, pumpkin versus apple versus pecan. So it's like which one has the most calories and which one is the best. So 
it's saying that pumpkin pie is easily the least caloric of the three choices. And it's showing that pumpkin pie is only 350 calories and total fat is 20 grams. Now, that's a nice size slice of pie. So with the pie being that size, you could probably get maybe eight slices out of the pie. But you see it is on the crust. So with it being 350 calories, you know, you take about 100 and some calories from the crust and just have the pie, the filling, even that dollop of whipped cream, if you had that on there, it would be a little bit less than 350 calories. And then moving on, the apple pie is 480. This is a staple of Thanksgiving celebrations. Apple sits squarely in the middle of the three pies from a caloric standpoint. Point. So you have the apple pie with, it has a top crust and a bottom crust. And then it has the pie filling with the apples in the middle. So it's saying that it's 480 calories. So just imagine if you took the crust off and just had the center. And you could also put a dollop of whipped cream on that as well. But if you take both of those crusts off, it's going to be less than 480 calories. And then moving right along to pecan, look at the pecan pie. 620 calories. It says, with an astonishing 620 calories per slice, pecan pie dominates the contest from a caloric standpoint. It doesn't have, I mean, this crust here on the back is a little bit thicker, but with all the calories you're getting from the sugar that's in that layer right there, and then your pecans, you know, they have nutritional value to them. It says, you know, they have a wide variety of vitamins and minerals, but most of that 620 is from the sugar and the corn syrup, which is sugar, and then your crust. So if you can remove the crust and do a crustless pecan pie, you're eliminating a lot of the calories. So try to eliminate something and it'll help you feel a little less guilty if you take that crust away. I'm actually going to make a crustless pie. So let's come on to my kitchen and see what I have in there, what kind of ingredients I have to make this pie. And you guys know I love a slow cooker, so it's going to be a slow cooker pie. So let's come on, see what I got, and let's get started. Okay, everybody, this is the stuff that you need to make the crustless pumpkin pie that I'm going to put in the slow cooker. Cause like I said, you guys know I love my slow cooker, so it's gonna be in the slow cooker. You need, it says a 15 ounce can of Libby's pumpkin, but I don't have Libby's. I have Market Pantry 100% pure pumpkin, so I'm going to use that. That's a 15 ounce can. You also need a can of evaporated milk which is a 12 ounce can. You also need two eggs. So I'm going to use the just egg for the egg. So on the back, three tablespoons equals one egg. So I have six tablespoons of the just egg right here. You also need three-fourths cups of brown sugar, which is right there on the plate. 
don't have a three-fourths cup, so I have one, two, three, one-fourths cup that equals three-fourths cup. I also have one teaspoon of ground cinnamon and one teaspoon of ground nutmeg. That's the nutmeg, that's the cinnamon. It also calls for cloves and cardamom, but I don't have those. And usually when I make pumpkin pie, because I like pumpkin pie, I usually don't have that extra stuff in there. So this is everything that I'm using. And I'm going to mix it all together because in the instructions it says to put everything in the bowl and whisk it together. Here's my bowl. I'm going to open up my pumpkin. Now it says use a whisk and whisk all the ingredients together. Oh, it did say a fourth teaspoon of salt. I forgot to put the salt in it. So they're just about a fourth teaspoon. Now I'm going to pour this into the slow cooker. And I'm going to put the lid on it now. And as you can see, I'm gonna take the lid off real quick. The slow cooker, I have a bag on it, a liner, and I also have it lined with foil so the pie can cook it's going to raise up in the foil and so the foil is almost like the crust <laughs> but you know you don't eat the foil but anyway that's how it's going to cook so i'm going to put the lid back on and i'm going to turn this on high got my timer set and it should be ready in about two and a half hours. You take the bowl out of the slow cooker once it gets finished. And this is what it looks like. It is ready to be eaten. It has cooled down. I allowed it to cool down for about an hour. So, what I can do is, it's late, it's 8.37, so I don't like to eat stuff late, like after 7 o'clock. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator for tomorrow, and have a piece of the crustless pumpkin pie for dessert tomorrow. And go stop by the store, get some whipped cream to go on it, and going to enjoy the pie. So, like I said, this is what it looks like. And I'm gonna get a piece out and show you. I just I just scooped the piece out. So just imagine if it was in the crust, what it would look like. But it's nice and creamy. Nice and smooth. No crust, no fuss, no must. Just deliciousness and half the calories. So like I said, if you want to eat dessert and not feel guilty, you can make it in a slow cooker and remove the crust.
Well, I hope you guys liked that video. I'm going to be honest. I tasted the pie the next day. And to me, you could taste the, well, it's not metal, but it's aluminum foil. And that's just my opinion. I could just taste the foil in the pie. So the next time I make it, I'm not going to use the foil. I'll just do the liner and then just pour the mixture in the liner. But you can try it either way. And I did get some Cool Whip, put it on top, but it was really good. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed that video. And as always, peace and blessings to you all. Have a good week, have a good weekend, and you will see me next Saturday.